Hi, welcome back. This is Eric Thornton, and this is the next in a series of learning and education tutorial videos from Chameleon Metadata. This video follows the Java, which is the first of three prerequisite sets of instructions that have to be followed so we can set up open source software quickly in the future. Today we're going to be installing and configuring Sigwin. Sigwin allows a kind of environment bubble be set up in isolation inside of a Windows box PC and uh, allows you to run Windows program, uh, Unix programs on, on top of a Windows PC because most of the open source stuff wants to run in Windows. So let's jump right into installing Sigwin. First, a quick review. All the courses have an outline and they're uh, summarized over here on the left panel. What we see in today, there's eight major steps. In this particular case, only through step six is required, but I would strongly suggest that you do seven and eight. Even though you may never use SSH, it's easy to do right now while we're doing all the install. And if later down the line you want to use this in a cluster, say for uh, Hadoop or Cassandra, it makes things quite a lot easier to do it right now for a passwordless logon. But that's for another day. Let's jump right into the first task. And as always, in the upper right-hand corner is a PDF of the outline. L upper uh, lower right-hand corner is a link to get email to me, et at chameleonmetadata.com. Always happy to hear questions or comments. So if we open up the PDF version, we'll run through the outline. The first thing we're going to do is create a directory, and notice I've left that up to you. In the Java uh, video, I did say install Java where Windows is installed, which in that last video was the C drive. If we look at this particular PC, we'll notice that it's just a standard Acer PC bought off Amazon.com. It's got 4 gig of memory, and it's running Windows 10. Now, in my case, I installed Java on C because Windows was installed on C. But all the other stuff we're going to install, it'd be better if you put it on D. It's a lot easier to swap all of this this material over to a new PC and have a lot of the groundwork pre-done say if you get a second one and you want to add to your Hadoop cluster if you segregate this stuff so as we look at the first question it's going to create a directory on the data drive called Sigwin64 since we're going to be using the D we're going to create that directory there new folder all lowercase when working with Unix, I generally go all lowercase. So we now have a directory called Sigwin64 on D. So we've now done step one. Step two is going to be to download the uh, packages. And in this case, there's links to the 64-bit and the 32-bit packages. It downloaded, so I'm going to execute it and run it. So now we're going to install Sigwin. Let's just go here and see what the next steps are. We're going to install Sigwin. We're going to make sure we put it in that D Sigwin 64 and then we'll come back to this in just a moment for the next steps. So we go, I'll just do that so it's less distracting. Next, install from the internet. Next, here's where we want to switch to our D directory that we created because if Windows crashes we've got a better chance of saving all this stuff this way. Uh, pick all users because this is going to actually if you do install the SSH it's it's going to create another um, user called SigServe so all users we're confirming it's in D6 Sigwin64 we're on to the next the uh, package directory we're also going to say will be in D Sigwin 64 and next direct connection 
this may be different, but most of them are direct connection. And I just picked the top mirror. Uh, and we're going to go next. Now, while that's downloading, let's go back to our instructions. Sigwin downloads the way we're going to do it, a basic package. But some of the things we need, TCP wrappers and diff utils we're going to need, and we're going to put in the SSH and the SSL, not that we'll need it for most of these videos, but just since it's so easy to do right now, we'll install it and you just never need to use it. So the first thing we're going to do, you notice, is we're looking for open SSH and open SSL. So let's go back here and in this window, O-P-E-N-S-S-H. Now, one of the tricks I've learned, expand all of these, and then up at the top, just cycle through until you get to install. Go to install twice. You can even do it a third time. But if you do it this way, you pick all the sub-features. So now, going back to our steps, we've got the SSH done. Now we're going to go for the SSL. So we'll go back to the Sigwin, just do a backspace in L. Same thing, just to be sure. I'm doing this mostly so I, we can confirm it works. And you see I'm not making this up. So I'm going to cycle through. And notice how much is not picked by default. So I cycle through, install. Like I say, we could cycle through it again. As long as they end on install, Everything's selected, so we're good there. The next one is TCP wrappers. So we're going to do TCP underscore wrappers. Okay, and we have a couple components here. Same deal. Maybe I'm obsessive. I usually do it twice. And then the last one is called Diff Utils, and we'll do that next. So Diff Utils, same thing here, cycle through, everything selected. Let's go check our list. So at this point, we're done selecting the required Sigwin support packages. And we're going to now say next. Now at this point, it's going to say, this is why I don't, I don't cache this. Because by what we selected in, the, in those last screens, it says, hey, a lot of this stuff for Python and all of that is going to be needed too. Do you want me to include that? And we're going to say yes. And in fact, let me close this because you'll see it's about 25 after 2 here in New York. So I'm going to say next, suspend the recording because it might take a minute. And here we go. So I'll be back when this is done downloading. And again, 25 after 2 in New York on that clock so we can see how long it took. See you in a few minutes. Hi, Eric Thornton, and we're back. So all the downloads have completed. I'm going to select create icon on desktop and add an icon to the start menu. Click finish. And now at this point, let's go back to our instructions. We've done this. The next thing we're going to do is configure the, um, the Windows path. If you saw in the Java video, I like to go into these and just do a right click properties so I don't make any typos. So that was a control C to copy that path. Remember that to get to um, to get to where we're going, we can go to control panel system. Advanced Settings, Environment Variables. Now, unlike Java, we don't need to do a Sigwin home. 
but we do need to adjust the path. So we're going to edit the path. Remember this is a Windows 10 machine, so it looks a little different. If your path comes up, it should look like this maybe in the box. In this case, we always want the two Javas first. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new, bring that in there, and bring it right underneath Java. And then just like we did with Java, we're going to add a BIN or bin directory and move him right up there. So we say OK. We notice that now it's right after that. OK. There's our two directories. The order doesn't much matter in this case. So we're going to close out of there. We've now done figure, uh, I'm sorry, task D. Next, we're going to test the Windows configuration by starting Sigwin. And there we go. So if I pull it over here, we see the, uh, the name of this PC is IP1921. I, I, I name them that way so I can tell what they are. And this is the user I'm logged on as. It's a user called Remote. So that's great. We're going to close Sigwin. We now know that we've done that. The next step on test, uh, task F is let's make sure Sigwin sees Java. So we can even just highlight this and do Control C for copy. Now we first need to open a Sigwin window again. And by the way, if you ever make changes to any of the paths or uh, pretty much anything with Sigwin, make sure you close down any windows because it picks up the new values when, um, when you restart it. Now one of the things I still do for a lot is hit Control V. Now if you watch when I do that here, that doesn't do anything. I did copy it in, but when you're inside the windows, only your right click will work. So I'm going to paste that command. The command is Java hyphen version. In uh, some other versions of Unix, you have to write sodo, S-U-D-O space. That's not, this is the way this one works. Java space version. And I hope I don't get embarrassed, and I didn't. So now this is great news, because at this point, we know Sigwin is working, because we've got it working. And we also know Sigwin knows that Java is update 73 of version 8. So that's great news there. We'll go back to our list. And at this point, we're going to configure SSH. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to. It, it won't hurt anything. I would strongly, uh, I would strongly though, suggest that if you plan to use this for anything else, let's do step G and H. The one hassle, if you're using a laptop and you don't have password logon, this is going to make you do password logon for your existing. So say you're uh, Eric123 for my PC, and I never put on a password. I just start Windows and it opens. If you do steps G and, and H, it's going to create a new user called SIG server, so keep that in mind. But we're going to go ahead because someday we may want to use SSH, so we're going to copy, control, C, uh, I'm sorry, right click and copy. Then notice I have no Sigwin windows open, so I'm going to open a Sigwin window, and now we see that we have a Sigwin window open. And we'll refer back. We're going to run the SSH host config command. I copy, uh, right click and paste. Enter. Okay. Now here we go. D 
Do you have the required privileges? Where are we here? Oh, sorry about that. Let's do it so we're here. I do have the required privileges. This is different. This looks like a Windows 10 thing, but just say yes for that one. Okay. Should strict separation be uh, used? Yes. Should privilege separation be used? Yes. Do you want to install SSH as a service? We're there. Yes. The daemon, you notice that bracket thing is there. Just don't do anything and hit enter for that one. Do you want to use a different name? See, this is going to be the new user SIG server. We're going to say no. Do you want to create a new user account? Yes. Please enter the password. And on my password here, I'm just going to um, pick one that we use. You can pick whatever one you want for the user password. But remember it. I'll tell you this. Remember the password. And it doesn't hurt to use the same password on all the machines in a sandbox. You can't do that in production. But at least you know you won't have SSH problems if you use the same ID and password. So I'm going to just put in a password and hit enter. Re-enter that password and hit enter. Okay, reason is denied. Okay, this is interesting. So I'm glad we saw that. And I think what we have here is I'm going to finish that. And I believe that may have been because I didn't right click and hit run as administrator. Let's see. Either I'm going to re-record this video or it gets even more instructional. So let's go back to the first we're going to do the SSH host config, copy, right click, paste, minimize that so it's less distracting. I'm going to overwrite. I'm going to overwrite everything because as you saw, should strict separation be used? Yes. Again, we're just going to go through the, uh, there we go, and we'll bring this little fella up here so we can see them. Should privilege separation be used? Yes. New local account? Yes. We do the value of the demon. We just hit enter for that person. Create a new server. Do you want to use a different name? No. Uh, create a new privileged account? Yes. Enter the password. Now, so I'm going to keep this whole video mistake and all. Because that was a good one. It didn't run the first time because when I ran Sigwin, it, uh, it wasn't running as, as an administrator. So we'll fix this and then I'll show you. In fact, let's do that right now. I'm going to minimize both of these. So I'm going to right click this and hit properties and advanced. And then if I check this run as administrator, OK, apply, continue, OK. Now I won't get hit with that. So I'm going to leave it up there. It'll make the video longer, but I think, I think you'll get, you know, it's worth it. All right. So at this point, we've finished step G. And then the last part here, we're going to go to run. And we're going to, in the run box, I'm just going to say control copy.
So again, classic shell. That there'll be a link to that in the uh, in the useful links part. I'll put that up later today on how to get classic shell. It puts a um, an old style Windows. So I'm going to do run, and I'm going to paste in services. Well, I don't want that quote there. And there we go. So there's that. Now let's go back to our instructions, which are over here. Okay, so now what I'm going to look for is Sigwin SSHD in the services. There she blows. Right click. Properties. Starting it. And there we go. Okay, now it's running. Okay, so now we've gotten to the point where Sigwin's in. We've installed SSL and SSH. We've just started the SSHD server. Okay, now at this point, very important because we're going to close the Sigwin windows because when you do something like this, like I said, it won't pick up any of this other stuff we did until a new version of it. Now because we switched the shortcut, we're already running as administrator. And there is our new window. And back here, we're going to just copy this SSH keygen. Make that less. SSH hyphen key gen and hit enter okay let's go back to the instructions accept all the defaults I guess that's a typo on Eric's part but uh, we're going to accept all the defaults and let's close that again that empty for no passphrase this is the passwordless logon so what we're doing here is creating a little file that can be transferred and I'm just hitting enter and success means you see this random art image means it actually built a uh, 2048 bit key so let's go make sure that uh, we did that you see the keys random uh, random randomo image we've got the randomo image there in fact they use a different term now than when I wrote this but you get the point that little box there. Okay, and now what we're going to do is in this case we are going to copy this part here including the space copy and you see your machine name so let's get rid of that so it's easier pasting that and now my machine name is remote at IP 192.168.1.159. Yours will be whatever the green says there. And we check the instructions that we're good. And it'll say, are you sure you want to do this thing? And we're going to say, oh, yeah, that's how I roll. Uh, Du, 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 the application uh, disable the rules on that one. There we go. That was my firewall. Okay. Now this this particular one here isn't the password you gave. This is important because this can be tricky, right? So the password they're asking for is not the SSH. This particular password here they're asking for is for the PC itself. Okay? So now that's the one that when you have a lock screen at the screensaver for Windows because it's saying, are you going to be allowed to do that? So we've done that. Okay? And we... Um, and we've done that and you did, and okay and this is what I'm saying here on this last step it may be different 
Oh, okay, I, I misnumbered them. But the uh, it was B at one point, now it's G. But I'm just saying it's different maybe than the SSH. So we saw how, how all that worked. And with that, we've cre done all eight of our major steps. I strongly suggest you do these two. And we're done now with the uh, configuring and installation of Sigwin PDF here. Hit me with any questions or comments there, et at chameleonmetadata.com. And with that, I'm going to say farewell till the next time when we're in Apache Maven. And if you're disappointed this was the longest video, these next two should be five or six minutes each. So this is Eric Thornton for the Chameleon Metadata Learning and Education Series. Don't forget our YouTube channel, which is just available there. And we'll see you in the uh, next video where we configure Maven. Bye-bye.